Hello and welcome to the Artificial Light series, a highly requested series and I can totally understand because working with artificial light can be quite challenging. But today I'm going to show you a setup for recreating beautiful natural light using only one artificial light source. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when you're shooting with artificial light. Number one, if you don't want all your photos to have that sunny, direct hard light look, you'll need a modifier. A modifier will disperse all the light into different directions, making the light more diffuse. When you use a modifier and diffuse that primary light source, the primary light source is no longer your light source, but the modifier is. That's why the bigger the modifier, the bigger your diffuser, the more diffuse your light will be. Of course, this is all relative to your subject. If you're shooting a cookie, you don't need an enormous modifier. So bigger diffuser, softer light. Let me show you an example. Number two, placement of your light is very important. If you place your light next to your setup, your shadows will be shorter. And if you place them further away, your shadows will be longer. Let me show you an example. The same goes for when you point your light down, your shadows will be shorter, but if you're right next to your setup and uh, more on the same level, your shadows will be longer. Let me show you an example of that too. Number three, the distance of your light compared to your diffuser. If you put your flash right against your diffuser, but I would never recommend that because you'll create a hot spot with really intense burst of light. But if you put it relatively close to your diffuser, you'll get very hard shadows. If you put it further away, you'll get softer shadows. Keep in mind that if you put your flash further away from the diffuser, the light will be less intense because it's further away from the subject. Um, so the scene will be darker, but you can remedy that by increasing your flash intensity. Let me show you an example of me putting my light near my diffuser and me putting my light further away with an increased flash intensity. Now, if you have a flash with a softbox, you can play around with the distance of your light compared to your diffuser because it's all set. But keep in mind that manufacturers know what they're doing and they created that set, especially for photography, and they know that that works well in pretty much all the situations. You can still play around with the placement of your softbox compared to your setup. So to sum it up, if you want soft and short shadows, get a big diffuser, place it right next to your setup, pointing downwards. If you want hard and short shadows, get a small diffuser pointing downwards, or you can either place your flashlight nearer to your diffuser, also pointing downwards. You get it, right? There are more ways to achieve the photo that you want. Before we start shooting our scene, I just wanted to explain that with flashlight, you need to kill ambient light. Killing ambient light means we don't use the light that surrounds us. We are only using the light that the flash gives us. This way we get super consistent photos regardless of the light. It doesn't matter if it's sunny out, you have all yellow lamps on or if it's super dark, it doesn't matter because you only get the light from your flash. We achieve this by setting our camera in a way that when we take our photo without flash, it's pitch black. This is when you know that you killed ambient light. And this is also the reason why there's not a perfect setting for flashlight photography, because your ambient light will always be different and you'll always need different settings to kill that ambient light. And this is also the reason that when we're not completely happy with our light in a setup, we don't adjust our settings, we adjust the light source. Because with adjusting our settings, we are reintroducing ambient light. Honestly, it took me quite a while for that to click, because I would always adjust my settings and then I would be um, wondering why is it easier for me to shoot with flashlight during the day and it's harder during the night and that was because I was always reintroducing that ambient light. And by the way, if you prefer to reintroduce ambient light, that's your preferred way of working and that's fine as well. Don't let me tell you what not to do, but um, you'll definitely get a more consistent result if you adjust your flash and not your camera settings because you'll get the same results if you're working in the middle of the night as well. Welcome to my photo studio, AKA my living room. Um, I've just styled my plum cake and I am going to show you how I do my setup for flashlights. 
I have two different types of setup. I have my flashlight with my um, softbox and I have my flashlight with a separate diffuser. I'm going to use my um, big diffuser right now because this is quite a large setup, like what we talked about earlier. Your, the size of your diffuser is always compared to your setup, but because this is quite large, I need a large diffuser to get that soft, soft shadow look. Um, so I'm going to grab a chair. It's always important to think beforehand of where you want your light to come from. If you want to have backlight or light from the side, if you're just starting out with flashlight, I can highly recommend just placing your flashlight at the place where your window is just because you're familiar with that type of light. As you can probably tell by now, I'm, I'm not used to doing my photography at this spot. I usually do it at a separate spot in the house, but because this is nice, has a nice space for the video, I decided to do it here right now. So. Um, I'm also just checking and testing out what works. Okay, my flash. Need a electricity socket. I do not have I do not have time for this. I have found an extension cord and a plug, so my light is all set up. I hope you can see it though, if it's not out of frame. Um, yeah, so I always shoot tethered when I shoot with flashlight photography because it's much easier to check on your computer if everything is well exposed and how the shadows are. So much better than just looking on your camera. Um, yeah, okay, uh, so like I said, if you shoot with flashlight, you need to kill ambient light. So I'm going to take a test shot with my settings in a way that when I shoot without flash, it's pitch black. And I'll show you some screenshots in between this video. Oh, without flash, that's important. <laughs> Otherwise it won't work. I can see it's still pretty visible, so we need to increase the aperture and I'm going to increase my shutter speed. Yeah, I can still see slightly, like a little bit of the frame, just a little bit more aperture. Okay, so now it's pitch black. You need to keep in mind that when you set your camera, you can go higher than one two hundredth of a second. Uh, the reason why is pretty technical. It has to do with the sensors in your camera. But if you go higher, then you'll get a black streak on your pictures. So one two hundredth is max, uh, or you could go lower, obviously, but just not higher. So I ha now have my black photo. I killed ambient light, and I'm going to put on my flash. And just for educational purposes, I'm just going to decrease the intensity of my flashlight to 10. That's the minimum. And now we can take a test shot. My flash is a moderate amount away of my diffuser. We are not touching camera settings now anymore, just adjusting our flashlight. It's very dark, so we need to increase, increase our flash intensity. I'm going to go up to 40, just a guess. That's pretty much what flashlight photography is, just guessing what works and adjusting if needed. Okay, um, I really like the left part, but the right part is pretty dark. Um, so I think my shadows are still too strong. So what I want to do is I remove the flash further away from the diffuser so the light is more diffused. 
And let's take a test shot again. I know it's going to be too dark because we just removed our we just removed our light source. Oh. I just want to show you what it looked like. Too dark, but you can already kind of see the more diffused look. So let's increase a bit more to 53. Let's check. Could go a bit higher even, and maybe even a bit further away. And going up to 60. Okay, probably the lens, um, the flash is probably now out of frame because it is quite a bit further away. But like I said, the further away from your diffuser it is, the more diffused the light will be and the softer the shadows will be. Yeah, so I really like the exposure, but I feel, still feel like the bottom part here is a bit too dark, but that's also because I have this side part of the table that will always be dark because it's just the light doesn't come over here. But I am going to use this flag to fill in this part a bit. It's just white cardboard paper. Put it right next to your frame so that's just out of frame, but still very near to your setup. Why are you not flashing? There we go. Yeah, that really fills in all of those shadows very nicely. I do actually kind of like the bottom part having more shadow because I love a light yet moody look. But as you can see, the shadows, especially in the top part of the photo, they're very soft, very diffused. And that's just because we put our light source further away. Now we can bring our light source closer to see what that looks like. Need to decrease intensity. Going to bring it down to 38. And I'm also going to place it a tad higher, like so. Yeah, that's really nice. So the shadows are a bit darker, not that much darker because it's not, there's still some distance between our light and our diffuser. It's just a bit more, um, yeah, just a bit more there. Uh, but, and also because we still use our flag, this part, lower part of the cake is not as dark. Um, we can take a photo without a flag, see what it looks like. way more shadow but if that's your preferred look then don't use a flag and if you want to um, fill in those shadows a bit then this is definitely a good option it really depends for me um, per photo I like those darker shadows but I also like that light and bright look okay so I showed you how to get that really diffused look and I also showed you how to get more of the moody light look by bringing in your flashlight and now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you use a softbox. So I've placed my softbox right next to my setup because we want short shadows so it's near to our setup. 
Um, it's still pretty big, but it's not as big, obviously, as the diffuser, so I'm expecting harder shadows. Yeah. But let's just take a test shot. Um, I am bringing it down all the way back to 10 again because it's so close to our setup right now. So we need to do another test shot to, just to see what we're starting out with. Okay. It's a bit too dark, so we need to increase our light, but not by a lot, so I'm going to 18 and check again. Now it's too bright, I need to go back down. Like I said, I did expect some um, darker shadows because our diffuser compared to our setup isn't that big. Um, and, and right, I did get some darker shadows, um, especially on the whole right side of the photo. Increasing will only increase the left part of the photo, so I am going to place my light up and point it down more. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now we bring in a flag to get rid of those shadows on the top part. But as you can see, because it's just a, a smaller diffuser and it doesn't disperse the light as much, this whole bottom part is still pretty dark. this really helps but let's say if I were to photograph only this plate let's do a test shot of that and put a flag here Place it a bit further away. See how much more diffused that look already is? So it's very important to keep in mind that if you shoot sh uh, smaller objects, you can use a smaller diffuser, but if you go for larger scenes, it's very hard to get it right with a smaller diffuser. So I would always recommend just having one of those um, in your house. I know it, it looks huge and kind of intimidating, but you can fold it up into a parcel and store it away easily. Uh, but it just comes in so handy when you're shooting larger setups. Okay. Um, yeah, so to summarize, if you want harder shadows, put your light nearer to your setup and decrease your flash intensity. If you want softer shadows, pull your light further away and increase your intensity. Don't mess around with your camera settings because you will reintroduce your uh, ambient light. Also keep in mind that when you shoot at different angles, 
your light will probably need to change as well. So if you shoot a flat lay, your light will probably need to be placed higher. If you shoot in a 45 degree angle or straight ahead, then you can probably place your light a bit lower. Just always play around with the placement of your light, but know that um, if you pull it away, what happens? If you place it higher, what happens? Because that makes your life so much easier. But you still need to play around with the intensity of your light, with your camera settings, and just your setup in general. I also wanted to do a quick note on continuous light because it's pretty much the same, except with continuous light you can't kill uh, ambient light. So you do need to turn off your lights as much as possible or you, if you, you can also use it in addition to your um, daylight. I use that quite a lot if I want to do a sunny look or a soft sunny look, I, I'll use my continuous light source for that. But if you just want to use your continuous light source as your only light source, then you need to uh, shut all of your uh, drapes, turn off all of your lamps, and, because you can't kill ambient light with continuous light. But the other stuff, the other principles of light, like flash, they all work the same. Pull your light source away if you want softer shadows and pull it nearer to your setup if you want those harder shadows with more contrast in your photos. Now I'm going to take some more photos of my cake because I wanted to also do some with a scoop of ice cream and I'm going to use my blow dryer to heat up the ice cream so that it melts just the right amount of um, ice on my cake. And it's hard to do that while also shooting a video for artificial light so I need to work fast with that so I'm going to do that now. But let me show you just uh, the result of my photography session of this afternoon. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you still have some questions, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, then please give a thumbs up, as they say, and subscribe to this channel, because more will come. Thank you so much.